Hey, I'm Mike Miller with the Herald Times, Jeremy Price, columnist, uh, previewing Tuesday's game, Indiana versus Illinois here at Assembly Hall. Uh, Monday afternoon, Indiana broke back into the Associated Press top 25, meanwhile, uh, going up two spots in the USA Today coaches poll. Um, Indiana comes into this game on a 10-game winning streak. Uh, confidence as, is at a high. This is a team playing well, that seemingly on both ends of the court. Even when they're not playing well, they've found ways to manage the rough spots, play uh, weather the storms, as Tom Crean likes to say. Um, what do you see this week ahead, Jeremy, both Illinois and we, as we move into uh, Northwestern this weekend, too? Well, I think uh, Illinois is sort of an interesting case coming in, just one and four in the Big Ten, but their one win was against Purdue, which is not a team that you would think that Illinois would match up well with, considering the Illini are shorthanded on the front line, don't have a lot of big guys. The big guys they do have are more comfortable playing away from the basket than near the basket. Sort of reminiscent of the Indiana team that opened up in Champaign last year where Colin Hartman was making his debut with Hunter Perea hurt. So it's sort of be interesting to see how Indiana handles that, how it defends, especially against Kendrick Nunn and Malcolm Hill, a couple of guys capable of putting up big numbers. Mm -hmm. Illinois, obviously, like you've said, they're a team that's really struggled with injuries, uh, ineffectiveness at times, but they do have some, uh, some firepower. Um, Indiana certainly got a dose of uh, its own firepower over the weekend in Minnesota. Nick Zeisloff going off for uh, five three-pointers, including four in a row. Uh, last year, he actually had a really nice game at Illinois in that Champaign matchup. He's always liked playing against his home state team. And I think if there's one guy that Indiana was happy to see get untracked at Minnesota, it was Nick Zeisloft. I think he was something like four for 25 from three before he, breaking through. I think he hit five of his final six against Minnesota. So that's a big breakthrough. If that momentum can carry over, that helps to fill the gap left by James Blackman's injury a little bit and sort of gives Indiana just another option now besides the main guys, the Yogi Ferrells, the Troy Williams, the Thomas Bryants. The big storyline to follow tomorrow night will be Yogi Ferrell. He is one assist shy of tying Michael Lewis's career record, I believe, of 545. Yes. Uh, two will break that record, uh, very much expected tomorrow. Uh, it, it's, it is inevitable. It's been inevitable all season long, it seems like. Uh, Yogi is closing on a very significant milestone in this IU career and in, in these IU record books. Yeah, and he's done it really with consistency this year. You know, it wasn't a matter of when, it was just a matter of, or if, but a matter of when he was going to break that record. And like you say, he's marched steadily towards it, uh, put up good assist numbers. I don't think he's had fewer than four assists in a game this year. So I think it's certainly within the realm of expectation that he's going to break that record against Illinois. 7 o'clock, Assembly Hall. Game will be broadcast on ESPN. For Jeremy, Mike Miller, we'll see you later.